So Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is a Sony animated film that is also, of course, a Spider-Man film. This is also a film that is about Miles Morales, who is a superhero, a Spider-Man specifically, who is trying to figure out his powers, but he also realizes that he's not the only Spider-Man in this film that is... How do I explain this film? Well, first things first, let me just give you a little background information if you haven't seen my reviews before. So, the superhero genre, I do like some superhero movies. Dark Knight Trilogy and Watchmen are my favorites for sure. But I am very critical of this genre. This is a genre that always falls into a trap where it's first two-thirds. Usually interesting stuff, obviously, as of late, not as much. But usually it's two-thirds of interestingness. And then final act of just PG-13 action. It's boring. Let's face it. It's boring and it's just the type of thing where it gets old after a while. And this film, honestly, um, it is mind-blowing. This is a film that does a really, really good job of getting you into the film. Right from the beginning, I could tell this was going to be a unique experience. And normally, I don't judge a film five minutes in, but five minutes in, I was like, my goodness, why is it a $100 million animated film can do what a $300 million film, looking at you, Infinity War, can't do? It is ambitious. It has... 3D animation that is just eye-catching, it's got witty writing, it's funny, it's clever, it's surprising. This is a superhero film that I want. This is a superhero film that I tell people to go see. It's the type of film that mass audiences can obviously attach to because of its vibrant, entertaining nature. But then film buffs and film critics such as myself can attach to because of its original nature. And it's just incredible to watch because this is a film that looks like it was ripped right off a comic book. The way it was told, the way it looks, obviously, the way the characters speak, it's great. Because it reminded me a lot of Scott Pilgrim vs. World. And honestly, this film made me want to rewatch Scott Pilgrim vs. World because I feel as though I'll appreciate it more. This film on its own, it's really good. I loved pretty much everything about it. There are a couple of negatives, but I'm just going to say this. If you like original storytelling, if you like a film that knows how to be funny, action-packed, as well as dramatic when needed, this is definitely a film I would highly recommend. Do not just go and think that this is just an anime film. It's not. This is trippy. This is the type of film. I don't do drugs, but this is the type of film that I would say to someone that does, go into it, watch it sober, and then... Rewatch it on drugs because this film was very trippy in the best of way. A lot of it reminded me of Requiem for a Dream, the way it was edited and everything. But obviously, Requiem for a Dream was a masterpiece. And this film, while it's not quite a masterpiece, it's still really good. Now, with all the positive I said, there are two negatives I have. Now, the first one's kind of a nitpick. Um, it just kind of goes with the genre, I suppose. Uh, the villain. Uh, Kingpin, I like Kingpin, I really do, but I just felt like you get a little bit of backstory, but not enough to where it's like, oh wow, this is a dimensional character, you really get to understand him. It's like, nah, you really don't. The other is, and um, I don't know, maybe it's just I watched too much Screen Rant, which I know this is, I know a lot of people are probably like, oh, now all of a sudden you're going to be advertising them. I'm not, I'm just saying, like, I watch the pitch meetings all the time, clearly. And there's a couple scenes that just kind of reminded me of something that if a pitch meeting does this film, they're going to cry teak because there's a, a certain character where they keep on freezing up and it only freezes up when it's so that the plot can then get the characters in danger. And it's just kind of like not as strong storytelling that the rest of the film so easily showcases. So for me, it was just kind of annoying to kind of see that there are a couple of little cracks in the script but overall the script is still great like it's still 95 percent great it's just five percent it's just kind of like oh you know screen rant's gonna have a field day with that but other than that spider-man is the spider-verse it is the superhero film i wanted this year it is the best superhero film of the year it's not saying much i know because most of them i gave three out of five stars but this is a film that is surpassing all expectations of mine i honestly hope it doesn't get a sequel not because it's a bad film. I actually really, really like this film. But usually when a film does well, it gets a bunch of sequels. And then the novelty of the first film wears out. And I don't want that to happen. I want this film to be embraced by audiences and critics alike. And I just want people to witness it as well. So 
Other than that, Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, it will be getting a four and a half out of five star rating for me, which gets the good old Tabasco rating. So uh, that's my rating. Guys, Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, does it live up to the hype? Is it disappointing? Do you think it will get a sequel? Probably. Let's face it, it's Sony. They don't know when to stop. Let me know your thoughts, guys, in the comment section down below. And as always, don't forget the subscription, the notification bell, and I'll uh, catch you guys later.